A few weeks ago, I was in Los Angeles on the Nextworks Inspiration Tour, and the word of the week was communities. Uh, companies didn't talk about customer loyalty anymore. They talked about how to build a community. And the underlying hypothesis is if you build a community, customers will become more loyal. And of course, we, we heard this explanation from companies like TikTok and Snap. Um, so a lot of people are like, yeah, of course, they have this huge community and they're technology companies. But how does this work for a normal non-tech um, company that isn't running a social network? And I thought that was a very interesting question. So I was thinking about a number of strategies that you can use to build your own community. Um, and the first one is memberships. Can you create a membership? Can you create a group around your brand? Of course, Amazon Prime is the top example of that. And again, that's a technology company. Uh, I'm aware of that. But also more traditional retailers like Lululemon, who is into um, fashion, sports fashion, they have their Lululemon community where they invite customers to come physically together for yoga classes and workout sessions. They have an online community with these people so that they bring together a group of people with similar interests and the brand is facilitating that. And I think this is something that almost every organization can, can think about. Um, if you own a bookstore, why don't you run the book club in your store? And if you don't have the energy to do it yourself, find someone who runs it and you facilitate it. If, if you're in the food business, maybe you can have wine tasting or whiskey tasting events. You can be the host of that or you can be the facilitator of that. But every business has, let's say, an, an expertise and an entertainment layer around it where you can become the facilitator and where you create a membership, a group, a community of people around your brand, around that topic. And, and that's what brings loyalty. So memberships is, is the first strategy you can use. The second one that we are seeing more and more is the use of Web3 technologies. Um, again, in LA, I had the pleasure to meet Niels Jewell. And Niels is the producer of films like The Irishman. He works with uh, Scorsese as a director and and he is frustrated with the movie world because he's like as a producer or as an actor you get often part of the profit but the big studios they are so non-transparent about their costs that even big films like the harry potter films they were not profitable profitable uh, warner studios didn't make any money by harry potter films we all know that's not true but in the books it looks like it's not profitable so they don't have to share the revenues and the profits with their actors and with their crew. So Niels thought that was totally unfair. And that's why he started NFT Studios. And NFT Studios is a form of crowdsourcing for films. So you buy a piece of the film. If enough people do that, they have enough money to actually make the film. And they're fully transparent in all their costs. So when the movie becomes successful, the NFT owners get part of that revenue. That is part of the smart contract that is part of the NFT that you buy. And by doing so, he creates, creates a shared interest, which creates a community, which is creating loyalty uh, for that film because you are part of that investment. That's strategy number two. You can use new technologies to, to create commitment. Strategy number three is, can you activate your ambassadors? And you can do that in a very simple way, like when you buy a new iPhone, there's always an Apple sticker in that little box. So you can use that sticker to show that you're an Apple fan. That's a very small thing you can do. But I would like to share the, the story of Angel City to explain this strategy to you. Um, I, I had the pleasure to meet the, the management of Angel City, which is a new female soccer team in Los Angeles. We went to see a friendly game there while we were in town. And we also heard their story. And Angel City is, is two years old. They, they started in 2021. Um, and there are a whole bunch of famous people behind it. Some famous actors, actresses, because they're all female. Some famous sporters like Serena Williams is part of that group. And all of them are investing a small amount of money, but they have a huge community behind it. And they are using the strengths of that network and, and they activate their ambassadors to make a difference. But it's not just the Serena Williams of the world that are active ambassadors. They, they have this sense of 
community work because uh, a big chunk of the money that they're making is going back to helping out uh, females in the United States to boost equality for female rights. So they're creating this whole community of, of women who want to support the cause. And because of that, they become a fan of Angel City. They buy the jerseys, they buy some scarves, and they become an active ambassador on their social media. And, and this brand has become so successful that even before they played one single game, they had about 20,000 people who bought an, an annual ticket. And if in the States, if you buy an annual ticket, it's like for five or six years. So their stadium is sold out for the next five to six years. And it was sold out before they played a single game. Um, this is the same stadium where David Beckham used to play. Um, there were never as many fans for David Beckham as now for this female soccer team, Angel City. And the secret behind it is activating their ambassadors, creating ambassadors and activating them, which creates this community, which is creating loyalty. And, and I just want to share this because I think that we're focusing too much on brand loyalty programs, very old school in, in terms of philosophy, if you ask me, because loyalty starts from the customer there. Uh, you want them to buy 10 things first and then you're going to do something special. In the philosophy of community building, you bring value from day one and the customer gets value and because of that, they reward you with their loyalty. So it's the opposite mindset of what we usually do in, uh, in marketing. So I wanted to share that with you guys.